Scanning with the Artec EVA is easy, but there are some basic rules and techniques that you need to know in order to capture good data. We'll look at those in this video. The first thing I want to talk about is how you actually scan an object uh, with the EVA. So typically with the EVA, you're going to hold the EVA and walk around the object. The object will stay stationary. Now that's not the case 100% of the time. You can potentially use a turntable with the object. Um, some people use turntables with people. The key there is when you are scanning the base of the object and getting the turntable in there, what you don't want to do is capture the moving turntable along with the base underneath the turntable, which is stationary. There's reasons for that. We won't get into that, but that's just something to keep in mind. Typically though, with the EVA, you're holding the EVA in your hand and you're walking around, moving around the object. Um, okay. So, let's start the preview here. You'll hear the fan on the EVA here, because I'm holding it pretty close to my microphone. Um, but, the first thing I'm going to look at when I start my preview on the scanner is the distance meter. So the distance meter is right here. And what I want to do is make sure that this waveform, which is what the scanner is seeing, that's the, the, um, the geometry that is being picked up by the scanner, I want to make sure that most of this, and sometimes depending on what you're looking at, this can be really long. If I'm at an angle, it's really long. But you want to make sure that most of this is within these three center portions of this distance meter. The reason for that is if you are really close, notice you just get a bunch of noise, the object kind of cuts off. If you're really far, same thing, it cuts off. Now, a little, um, a little note here on the EVA, the further back you are, you're still gonna pick things up, but you'll potentially get more noise in your scan and the, the small details won't be as sharp. So typically you wanna to try to stay in the center here. Because if you're on this very back end of the, of the distance meter, um, you're not gonna get the best data. So again, keep within those three center sections of the distance meter. Okay, so if I start my scan here, one other key here is since you have to watch that distance meter, you want to watch the screen and not the object that you are scanning. Now, if I'm scanning over here, I'm watching my distance meter. If I look over here and then just start scanning, I might be okay, it depends on the object. Um, I've been scanning for, for a little while, so I have the general feel, it's kind of like muscle memory, right? I got the general feel for um, scanning, but this is not typically what you want to do. You don't want to be watching your object and, and just walking around um, without watching the screen, because you have to be able to watch your distance meter, and you have to make sure that um, your, your object is actually staying in the field of view. All right, the next thing is while you're scanning, and I'm pointing this at the object, while I'm scanning, I want to keep my arm and my wrist loose. And I just um, pointed this way too far there. Uh, but as I'm scanning and moving around, you will get the best scan results when you're scanning from lots of different angles. So what we want to do here is keep our wrist loose so we can move it around and try, you know, scan from different angles as we are scanning. Um, a lot of people have a tendency when they first pick up something like the EVA and have to walk around an object, they'll lock their arm next to their side, they'll lock their wrist and try to move like this. And this is a lot more difficult to get the proper data um, because it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility there and you'll lose tracking a lot more. So keep your wrist loose while you are scanning. Also, the next tip is when I'm scanning, I want to make sure that I keep the object in the center of my field of view. So I'll stop that scan. Let's just start another one. All right, so there's my field of view, right? You can see how it cuts off left to right if I'm moving from left to right. So if I center what I'm trying to scan, again, I'm watching my distance meter and I'm keeping my object in the center of my field of view. Notice that green all the way around, right? That green box is your field of view. So if I move over here and I'm trying to scan and I'm just barely catching the right side of my field of view, I could lose tracking just like that. So you want to try to keep 
the object in the middle of the field of view for the best results as far as tracking and geometry pickup goes. Also, when I'm scanning, I don't want to be just jerking around like this with really jerky motion, stuttering, that sort of thing, you know, moving around, shaking it. This is keeping tracking um, pretty well because the object's got a lot of geometry on it. But um, that's not the best technique in general. So when you're scanning, I'm going to start scanning right now. And as I'm scanning, as I'm moving around, I'm moving around deliberately with smooth motions, trying to keep the object in the field of view, just like that. All right, also, and I got a bunch of scans piling up here, we can just ignore that, we're not gonna process it. When I start scanning, notice if I'm scanning on the back side here, Notice the holes in the data there, right? On the front side, we've got the, the black, shiny labels. The scanners pick up best when they are perpendicular to whatever you're trying to scan. Notice, as soon as I come closer to that 90 degrees to the surface, it starts picking up that data a lot better. So keep that in mind as you're scanning. That's why uh, the, the next tip is you want to scan from lots of different angles, whether that's moving around, um, scanning, you know, from lots of angles this way, you know, as you're moving around, as well as stopping your scan, flipping your object around so you can get different angles that weren't um, visible before in your previous scans. So you want to scan from lots of different angles. And then finally, we want to talk about losing tracking. So I did this a minute ago, but if I start my scan here, Again, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. If I get to a portion that doesn't have enough features for tracking or if I, let's just say I point this up too high and notice I'm now not pointed at the object anymore. It's beeping at me, it's saying the object's out of sight. What you wanna do when you lose tracking, that a lot of people when they first start scanning, they'll start freaking out a little bit and they'll, they'll jerk back real quick, right? And that might work, but it's not gonna give you the best results. Um, what works the best is if you move down slowly back into the field of view, that will let the software line uh, things back up properly and you can continue your scan. If you can't regain um, tracking after you lose it, just stop your scan and then you can start another one and you can just combine that data later on. So that's about it. Those are the basic tips and tricks for scanning with the Artec EVA. Follow those tips and you'll be capturing really good data in no time.